uh, have some uh, benefit from vectorization of code. Uh, why have, have we not used it so far? I mean, I'm going to claim that it's one of the best uh, things uh, the policy has. Why hasn't it been used more? Um, if, it can, if it can be degraded into Linux, um, what are the, uh, the ways to do it? Uh, what is Debian's role in this effort? I mean, okay, this is DebConf, and I'm doing an alt presentation. There. there must be a connection. How can we use Debian and how can we benefit from it? And uh, some uh, coding examples, actually, I'm going to skip the presentation and show you the code in the benchmarks directory. So, uh, I don't know, basically, this was an introduction. Is there anyone who doesn't know what Altrek is or what CMD is? I, I, you no, know it's the same thing, but I know very little about it. Okay, uh, basically, uh, CMD units don't really enable you to do things faster, but they enable you to do th more things at the same amount of time. They process more data with the same instruction. Uh, CMD stands uh, for single instruction, multiple data. It's the same, in theory, it's the same unit as MMX uh, or SSC2, 3D now. They enable you, they don't make the, the processor run faster, but they enable the processor to process more data at the same amount of time. So, uh, it is acknowledged uh, worldwide to be the most uh, complete CMD implementation, out of it, that is. It doesn't, um, it is consistent, it, is, it enables the programmer to write code, out of the code in C, and not just assembly languages needed by other CMD units like uh, SSC or uh, LMX. Uh, one of the nice features that I really like, and uh, Sven insisted that I actually stress this point, uh, co compared to other units, other implementation, Antivec has gives three operands to every instruction, and the result is kept in another uh, register, which means that basically you can have uh, you, you don't need to reuse registers all the time like you use in other implementations. Uh, for example, in a, to do addition in a MMX or SSC, you have to put, uh, you have to place the result of the addition in one of the registers of uh, the operands, which means you cannot really. Uh, if you need the, the first result, you have to reload it again the next time. So. Where can it be used? Power consumption is something that is more important, of more importance uh, the more we go into the embedded market. And uh, I personally would like to see the G4 and uh, G5, well, not really G5, but the G4 uh, processor to go more into embedded uh, markets because it is comparatively low, low consumption. It's just about 10 to 15 uh, watts. Uh, where to, to find a similar performance uh, CPU that offers a vector unit like Altvec, you would have to go to a Pentium 4 or AMD 64 uh, CPU, which is just out of the question for the embedded market. Um, where else? Yeah, there are some cases where it is not really enough to just put a, a more processing power in terms of higher clock speeds. You have to you have to find another way to do it. For example, you, uh, you cannot really depend on higher clock speeds to do encoding, video encoding, especially real-time video encoding, and when you have to do, to do it with custom hardware. Uh, security is one of the, uh, one of the uh, uh, sections that you can use uh, virtualization. You can find, uh, I have written a paper about this, uh, no, well, not exactly this one, the, the, the whole security section, but um, I proved that it's possible to vectorize some hashing algorithms and some encryption algorithms, because there have been more before me, and uh, giving uh, quite good performance. I, I'm going to give some numbers afterwards. The codex, scientific computing, uh, linear algebra is one of the favorite, favorite uh, 
benchmarks of Apple to show algebraic, algebraic power. And uh, what is not really apparent is that we can use Altivec for generic computing. I mean, mostly Altivec has been used all, for, for that matter, everything, all other uh, SMD implementations have been used for video or other applications. If they have not really been used for generic computing, it's not really apparent that you can use it for generic computing, but you can, as we, as we will show. So this is a small an action animation I found from Mars Technica. It basically explains how the say same D approach uh, works. This is a scalar. This, this method is a scalar code. It just process one unit, unit at a time. You will uh, immediately recognize that this is a simple for loop. You have an array of objects. Just loop over every object and try to process process it. This is the same D approach. You do the same operation but on multiple sets of data. And this is one way to do it. Right, so you, let's say, is there a point or a stick or something? Never mind, then turn. Uh, basically, you have two arrays, A and B, of size N. And you want to put the result of the addition in this, uh, this in the second, the third array. So, using plain C, what do you do? You just loop over elements and add each element. Now, uh, to do that in, with another SMD uh, implementation, you would have to meddle with assembly code. But with Altfake, it's not really necessary. Actually, it's not even encouraged unless you're after 100% performance. You just have to write the equivalent C code using uh, Altfake extensions, which are included in the C, courtesy of Apple. And free scale, and uh, so you basically just as before, you create two. You have two arrays, uh, A and B, and you want to put the result in the vector result. So you just run the corresponding, corresponding command: vector at add vector A vector B, and you loop over each element. But there is a difference. The first loop does n iterations. The second loop does n over four iterations. It's, if you have to do with, uh, with uh, integers, with 32 bit integers. If you have to do with 8 bit integers, with characters, the, this number is 16. Basically, you process 16 bytes at a time, which, as you will see, it offers great performance. Right. Why hasn't it been used for? Why hasn't it been used so far? It is actually used in Mac OS X. Apple has really done a quite a good job in uh, uh, writing uh, specially optimized routines for that matter. Um, but the thing is that it needs quite extensive knowledge of the subject to to really benefit from it in the open source software. There are some projects that have actually really good uh, implementations for very specific routines like uh, mplayer does, ffmpeg does, mencoder has been optimized, giving really good performance but uh, these are all specific uh, these are all specific applications in uh, last September I think it was uh, I, uh, I watched the talk of Sergey Larkin uh, in uh, the free scale SNDF. Yeah, SNDF, right? In, um, in uh, Frankfurt. And uh, I noticed how easy it is to actually program in using Altifact. This was the, the initial kickstart, uh, so to speak, that enabled me to start working on Altifact. And uh, I was really surprised by how quickly I, could, I was. I could get fast performance out of the out of just a small CPU like uh, G4, which is by today's standards G4 is slow. But uh, not if it's not slow if you can actually learn how to program it in the proper way. So, and I raised the question there: Why can't we use it? Why can't we use Altivec to, 
enable the whole system, the whole operating system, to benefit from it. Right now, Altifig is underused in Linux. It's very practically non-used, only in very specific applications. Why not benefit? And uh, and uh, I asked uh, Genesee, and uh, which is the producing company of uh, Pegasus and uh, Freescale, and uh, they decided to fund this offer, effort. And so far I have quite a big list of applications and libraries that uh, can be out of optimized. Uh, I'm going to start with glibc. Basically, I've uh, released a better version of Libre of out of optimized common routines, like memcopy, string, uh, swab, uh, rock move, anything. Uh, you are going to see the results soon. This library is eventually going to be integrated, <coughs> well, hopefully at least, uh, if we can uh, convince the glibc maintainers to accept our patches, uh, to glibc, which means that, that every user, every PowerPC G4 and G5 user will be will directly benefit from it, just by updating their package. Uh, I've also done uh, Adler32 hashing algorithm, which uh, this particular one is used in uh, DVEX encoding and also Z library. Uh, the Berkeley DB hashing functions, sorting functions, as you will see, insertion sort, merge sort, these two, the first two are already finished and then working on quick sort. The results are really impressive as you will see as you will see soon. And um, the do list, this is just a, a small list of what we could do. Basically any I encourage any anyone who has some software that thinks would benefit from other factorization to just send me an email or just tell me an IRC. And uh, eventually maybe not me, but maybe someone else will work on it. Uh, so, how Debian can help? I mean, this is really, initially, it's not Debian's uh, issue. It's really more upstream. But uh, I found out that using Debian has enabled to learn to, to know the proper people that are responsible for each task. For example, Debian has very knowledgeable GLIPC people and they were very friendly and uh, yeah they, they basically told me that yeah if you can finish if you can write something like that and if we manage to resolve licensing issues which is a really no problem because there is no company involved that has copyrights or the tra trademarks uh, then it's quite easy to just transfer uh, copyright transfer the IP to uh, the FSF and then just include the patches into GLIPC itself. Um, also, Debian is, I think, in my opinion, it has one of the most, the, one of the strongest PowerPC communities. Um, they will directly give feedback about this optimization, whether they actually work or they are buggy or anything. And uh, yeah, it will also make Debian the factor distribution for. Of course, since the, the, the patches are going to go upstream, eventually they will be found in other distributions as well. But uh, yeah, I'm okay with Gen 2 going uh, popular, but I mostly care about that. Yeah. Right, so these are just a few numbers. I'm going to show you the actual results running in the system. Memcopy is almost four times faster. How is that possible? The ultimate unit has four times the bandwidth of the integer unit with the cache the cache on the CPU not with the actual memory bus the actual memory bus is still 32 bit yes of the size the size the size depends on the sorry uh, in this example what's the size the uh, size of the buffer right yeah, yeah. Uh, basically you are restricted uh, by the, uh, the cache size. Because my question is, uh, processor has a cache. Yes. Cache. So it depends. Uh, if a cache is uh, spilled out or 
insufficient of data, mm -hmm. so we need to get, bring data from exactly. memory. So uh, you're you're four four times faster or uh, n times faster. It depends on the uh, the copying size. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Can, you, can you control the memory maker? The copying algorithm. The, the, the source code. Track? Yes, yes, I will show it later. Yes. Uh, Map copy, yes. Uh, I should clarify this a little bit more. Uh, about memory copying, this is uh, this was actually a lot of debate in some uh, RSC channels. Um, basically, we try to benefit from uh, Altivex pre caching, well, uh, cache fetching mechanisms. Before we try to copy, the actual the buffers, we try to prefetch it from the cache. The previous command just prefetches the next buffer to be copied. So this gives us a substantial uh, benefit. Even for cold cache hits, you benefit from that because by the time you try to copy this uh, the, the the buffer, the small the small chunk of, of uh, data, you already have it on the cache. Even for cold cache, you have at least 20-25% speed increase. For hot cache, uh, for, for, cold, for, for data that is uh, already in the cache, we have pretty much about this four times faster. So, uh, of course, I should mention that Altivec is really useless on small uh, data, on small amounts of data. I mean, it's not really, there's no point in using Altivec for just copying 8 bytes, right? But uh, you have to work on, say, one kilobyte or one megabyte, then it, it, it's really worth looking at it. Is the setup very expensive for using Altivec? Mm, not really. So, when, at what, what is the break point? When does it go? Well, I, it depends on the case. For example, uh, if you want to do sorting, no, I mean for, well, for mem mem copy. mem copy. Okay. I should say that around uh, 90 bytes. Nine, one, 100, one, 100 bytes is maybe even less. 64 bytes would be okay. So, main CHR and string uh, length. If you actually think about it, this instructions <coughs> just check in small chunks of data if a particular byte is there. In uh, main CHR and string length is basically the same. One set for a, for an arbitrary. Uh, byte and string length checks for byte zero. Uh, Altivec offers one very convenient distraction, it just re returns a boolean. Is the byte x, does the byte x exist in this 16 byte vector? Yes or no? Which is very convenient. You can just take 16 bytes at a time, look at the code, look at the data, uh, ask Altivec to check if the, the byte zero is there, and if it's there, then you can find the position with other scalar things. But this is still faster than going up uh, the scalar way of the, of, uh, the start. Memset. Memset, it's about 10 times faster for small size. So I should clarify this. If you go, for every instruction basically, if you go over the cache, uh, outside the cache, the speed against drop, of course. Very much, I guess. Well, it, it depends on the algorithm. For example, with sorting, it's really, it really doesn't matter if you have one megabyte or, uh, one, on, or 100 bytes, because this is an algorithmic uh, modification that is much more fundamental than the actual autofactorization. Uh, but uh, this algorithmic uh, Optimization is not possible without Altivec, so I should consider this to very con well, very strongly correct. Uh, I know which of you know the memfrob function. It's a C function basically that does that does an XOR. You give it a buffer, it XORs the buffer with the value 42. Just that. Well, it was a joke uh, function, and uh, I tried to see if it could actually be vectorized and what would be the game. Since the original C function, C scalar code, does a byte per byte basis, uh, it, it takes a byte, XORs with 42, and puts the byte back. This does it all the time. Without the way, it was about 24 times faster.
uh, swab. Swab is very important for byte swapping. It can be used, for example, you give, you, for switching data from one architecture to another. For example, from PowerPC to uh, Intel or AMD. It's used for, uh, for writing out audio states. It's one of the functions that you use to write audio states. Hashing algorithms. These are algorithms that are used, uh, the particular ones that I vectorized are exactly the hashing algorithms that are used in the Berkeley DB library. Uh, because of the nature of the Berkeley DB library, I, could, I wasn't actually uh, really able to benchmark. So I don't know, uh, but I know how fast the algorithms are. Uh, and yeah, I should write here that also I'm working on vectorizing the MySQL hashing algorithm. It's a little more tricky, but I think it will work eventually. I mean, all these functions, all these algorithms, basically are part of one family, one whole family of hashing functions. If you vectorize a family, then you can basically just throw any, anything. I mean, I will show you in a few moments. Uh, Adler32 is uh, the hashing al algorithm that is used in Z library to, to uh, check for checksums for, for, of data, of chunks of code. You give it a chunk of code, it, it produces a hash, and then it checks the hash with the, with the one you've given it. If it's the same, then okay, go on, fetch me the next set of data. Uh, the Altivec the Altivec version is 2.5 times faster, and uh, it is two, only that with, I would say, with just the first implementation. I didn't. I suppose I could make it even faster, but uh, I thought, okay, 2.5 is okay for the first try. Maybe afterwards, when someone else will see it and find that, okay, you can do this, and this is a more clever way. The Z library. Uh, after profiling the library, or actually a uh, utility of the library, mainly GZ, which uses it to, it's a, a GZ replacement basically. Uh, I profiled it and found about six functions that would benefit from vectorization, that were time, very time consuming. Uh, I quite easily vectorized two of these, the others were more tricky to do, and uh, the benefit was about 25% 25 25 faster. Well, was not a huge difference, but 25% is 25%. And this is my favorite one. I think this is probably one of the largest uh, um, performance uh, performance gains from Altair. Uh I'm going to show you the exact algorithm later and uh, the actual benchmark running of the system. So I don't know if you can actually see this. This is the, the exact mem copy benefit. This is the scalar. This is not very visible, is it? Uh, right. Uh, supposedly there is a red line coming here and going like that. <coughs> it's approximately one gigabyte per second, the, the bandwidth of the system. Well, with Altivec, you go like that. For very small sizes, uh, until this is the 20,000, uh, approximately here, no. no. This, yeah. Well, in about 256 kilobytes, approximately here, it ends, uh, the cache is uh, the level two cache sizes are smaller than the actual size that I'm trying to copy. So you, I should see the performance going like that, asymptotically to the scalar version. But for small sizes, until 60 kilobytes, which is the size of the level one cache, you have four times the speed. After that, the performance drops, but it's still faster. Uh, I've had some, uh, very recently, I have had Marcin uh, Kurek, a guy from Morpho Westing, who uses to ask me to use these uh, functions in Morpho OS. Morpho OS is, um, uh, another operating system uh, which follows the, the Amiga OS way of uh, version. I mean, it is, it is compatible in some ways with the Amiga OS. And uh, 
Uh, I don't know exactly how MapOS works, but I know that he used it. He used this function since he found actually that the performance is as, uh, as uh, mentioned. So even for small stuff that you don't really want to work on vectorizing, I mean, you can just, you don't care about vectorization. You just want your code to go faster. You could use some of these functions or that are already made and plug it in your code, just relink and use it. So this is this is the insertion. Is it visible? Yeah. Basically, supposedly. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. Uh, if size is increasing, increasing, mm -hmm. then uh, the blue, uh, blue line will be dropped to red line. Will, will yes. Eventually, yes, it will. Uh -huh. But. Even so, there will be just because of the caching, um, uh -huh. cache prefetching uh -huh. mechanism, there will be a slight benefit even for that uh, reason. Instead, uh -huh. if we uh, introduce prefetching function into uh, red line, uh, the normal main CPI, mm -hmm. uh, we can achieve more. Not really, because if it's already in the cache, uh -huh. uh, you don't benefit. The, if the, the data is already in the cache. Uh -huh. If you try to perfect it, then the operation is a no operation, basically, it's no. And it does nothing, it just wastes one cycle. But on the whole, if you know that your data will be on the cache, you don't need to do perfetching. You waste one instruction. But for generic use, you don't know that your code will stay. There is no guarantee that your data will stay in the cache. So it would, it's wise to actually use perfetching, in most cases at least. Uh, Yes. So, so, so the basic speed up is, uh, is uh, actually right behind that? Yes, basically. Mm. Uh, well, it's, it seems to be a lot of effort for, for uh, I mean, that's true for the big size, but for the size of what stays in cache, you have much more speed because you have half time the cache bandwidth. Mm. Yeah, uh, the, the, point, the point is... Um, I'm, I'm actually interested in why the GDIPS and memory function will not uh, will not be able to use the utilize the cache. Not it, it does utilize the cache, but it doesn't utilize half of it. Yeah. That's the point. I mean, if I when I, I'm going to show you benchmarks. Yeah. If you uh, yes. Another point of this is that Altidate has the possibility to to be bypass the cache, no? Yes, but this is and that means that if you do a main copy slower. of a huge bit mm. of steam with just the CPU, you just empty the cache of any useful yes. data for yes. other program. That's right. While using a TDEC, you, well, you keep the useful thing in cache. Yes. Yeah. There is uh, the cache, cache controlling is one of the more advanced techniques of gaining more performance, mm -hmm. but. Uh, yeah, it's quite tricky to, to, to work for both. Uh, trying to understand the, the, the huge rise around the, uh, around 15 to uh, 15,000 bytes. Uh, 15,000 bytes is, uh, 16 kilobytes is the size of the L1 cache, the level 1 cache. Yeah, but, but that's, that's not an Altivec feature, so... Uh, yes, it is. The Altivec unit has four times, it has 128 bits bus to the cache. 11 one cache, whereas the integer unit has a 32-bit bus to the ah. cache. So this is actually a four times speed increase. This is precisely the reason. Okay, but, but uh, why does it drop uh, uh, later on then? Because the memory bus, the 128-bit memory bus, uh, sorry, the 128-bit bus is not to the memory but to the cache. If the data is not in the cache, it has to fetch it, and you lose cycles this ah. way. So, whether you like it or not, the performance drops. Yeah, the, so, so the, the performance increase is uh, on, uh, only in theory, then? No, no, it's not in theory. Uh, as I said, mostly, most times, uh, the code, well, the data you're trying to do, to work on, is partly in the cache. And the prefetching is, is done, but not on all the data. Yeah, if, if we stay with the mentally example, yeah. so basically, um, I, I, I think the test case at hand is uh, when copying the same, uh, the same 
area of memory to, to another space over and over again. Yes, this the benchmarks. I've uh, well. I'm going to explain how to later how the benchmarks work, but since you brought the, the subject, uh, I tried to do two ways of benchmarking the, the, uh, this code. One was trying to uh, work on set on, on data that is all the times in the cache. Yeah. This is the four times per increase. The next method was would be to take a huge array over here, a huge uh, set of data, and then randomly. Pick, uh, set, pick data uh, buffers and then uh, try to copy one to another randomly. With the, and I, I knew that they were not in the cache. Yeah. Even then the performance increase was substantial, more than two times. Yeah, uh, yes, uh, I'm just wondering uh, uh, well, the point is that uh, in, in those low areas uh, the, the everything can be written to, uh, to the cache. I think, I think are basically missing missing the actual writing of the cache. No, that's really you don't. Uh, once you once you send the uh, once you store the data back to the destination address, then it's the responsibility of the CPU to actually copy the data from the cache to the memory bus. Yeah, but uh, but um, uh, it's an unspecified when this will happen. It will happen on the next memory bus or uh, no. yeah. I don't know that. And, Basically, since, since you don't know when this will happen, you, you don't, uh, you don't uh, you don't see it in, in the benchmark. And as well, you, uh, as you override the same area of memory again and again and again. Um, yes. Yes. So, yes. So, so, so basically, the, the big speed increase is not actually writing the, the data from the mem copy. As I said, uh, if you work on small sets of data. Yeah. Uh, Consider this example. You have, you're working with block sizes, yeah. disk block sizes, and you try to copy one to the memory and maybe process it and then write it back. And then you do it all over again. Uh, if you were doing it, of course, you have to load, put in place, load the code in the, the data in the cache, process it, then store it back in the yeah. cache. The CPU will find out that it's, uh, it needs more. Uh, this uh, that this data has been written, has been stored, so it's not really useful anymore yeah. to the to the main code, to the main loop. So it has to free it to load another block. Uh, this this process uh, really benefits from uh, from uh, Antibac. The the process I don't know if you know Martin uh, from IRC, uh, Melkor. He well. Okay, Melkor is his nickname. He uses this code on the file system he writes for uh, MorphOS. And uh, it proved to be actually worth it. I mean, he saw really, he did see performance increases. I don't use MorphOS myself, so I don't know how, to, how it, how it uh, benefits from that. But uh, anyway. So, shall I move to the next one? Right. The insertion sort algorithm. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to go to details of the algorithm, but I basically say that it's an n square, an O big O n square algorithm. Uh, so, for if you have, consider you have this is a buffer, a sequence. Okay, and you load it. If you were working on it on a scalar base, in a scalar way. You will just see this as a, a complete sequence, right? You would place bytes accordingly, or no, all over the sequence. So you would have to work on this is our uh, four times sixteen six four bytes. Okay, so you would have sixty four square maximum uh, iterations to perform to sort everything with using this algorithm. Using Cantibeck, I load this thing. In the registers, this is a 16 bytes, so I just load 16 times 16 bytes at a time, and I have four <coughs> vectors, four antivec vectors. I try to use uh, every byte in the vector as a column, so I sort everything in parallel. I sort 16 vectors, 16 sorry columns in parallel. 
This is quite easily done in using Caltivec. The code is quite fast. I'm going to show you to you, show, show to you and of course the code will be free, software, GPL, probably, I don't know. And uh, after you after you have sorted all the columns, you still have the uh, the burden of merging everything back together into one single piece of data, sorted data. So, the next step was to take all these sorted columns, as you can see, and put them back together into one single piece. Uh, what was the problem? All the merge algorithms I had found in, in Google, using Google, they were uh, all about having two sets of sorted uh, data. I couldn't find a generic merge algorithm that would take n sets of sorted data. So I had to write my own. Basically it was an extension of the existing one. Again, the algorithm is, uh, I, I've just finished a paper on uh, this uh, on insertion sort and the merge sort where I explained the exact uh, algorithm of uh, the generic merge sort. Merge sort. So, uh, integer sort is up to 54 times faster for uh, 138 keys uh, of, of characters. But of course, the situation is different, if you, slightly different if you have short integers or 32-bit integers. But if you have to sort um, 100,000 characters, bytes, then this algorithm is. I'm going to show you the results soon. But isn't that <coughs> you, the most cases where you use insertion sort is as, as part of quick sort when the, the, the partitions are really small? Mm. And if there is the there is a setup penalty for using after like operations, then it would defeat the whole purpose. At first, I thought so myself, but. Uh, I've done, uh, even for the smallest case I could use Aldivacon, it was 32 bytes, just two vectors, to take these two vectors and just sort one uh, column of two elements, or, uh, two col 16 columns of two elements, two rows basically, and then use merge sort on that to produce the actual sort of the sequence. Even this one was actually faster. Uh, it produced less, more or less the same in a number of iterations, but for that kind of uh, sizes, you don't really care if you lose some milliseconds. Mm. I mean, yes, Altivec does have a, a higher overhead to use than proper, just normal scalar code, uh, because you need to prepare the registers and masks and whatever. But uh, for for sizes that are bigger than, say, 256 bytes, then the 256 square is quite a significant number. Well, you don't use insertion sort. Yeah, I, you mean in general? Yeah. There are some times that uh, where insertion sort is faster than quick sort. Uh, basically, this whole this whole deal started when I saw an article in, uh, in Slashdot about using uh, the GPU. To, uh, to, work, to, have to sort elements, a, a GPU version of quick sort. And I thought, heck, why not, why not try Altivec? Uh, would we have any benefit from it? And then I tried to see what are the co most common and uh, used algorithms. One is quick sort, but quick sort has a, pen a, a, a disadvantage. It is not a stable sort algorithm. In session sort is one of the most common and it is stable. And uh, it is actually very useful, very useful when you have almost sorted data. I mean you have some data and you insert some other data in, uh, in the middle, but the previous data was uh, already sorted. Quick sort and that is very slow. I've tried that. It depends on what partition you are building. The basic, the basic competition. If you use a good partition algorithm, mm -hmm. it would really have really good speed on pre-sorted data as well. True, but uh, 
then you you I've noticed that all the partition algorithms that uh, are performance are offering good performance. Basically, they are so how to say uh, focused on, on specific sorts of data, maybe uh, totally random data that needs to be sorted or already sorted data. If you want to replace a very common routine in the kernel or in the in GLPC, you have to be generic now. And uh, quick sort is, is not considered to be the, the fastest routine. It's considered to be the most efficient in a generic way. This is why it's so popular. But there are cases where another function, where another algorithm is faster. Yeah. Uh, and anyway, the, the next step is to vectorize uh, quick sort itself. I mean, just do parallel quick sorts using uh, the, using cultivate, then using again merge sort to put everything back together. So this was in my in my estimate I think it will be about four hundred percent in speed increase because of what you're trying what you do because the sizes would be n over over four four times uh, lower. Uh, Right. <coughs> it's useful. In a few months, we expect to have Altivec code in GLFC for people to test at least very few common functions, maybe not everything. But uh, so far, we've uh, finished about 15. Uh, next thing is uh, that library, which, as I said, I've already done some initial work on LibMCrypt, which is mostly used for encryption code. Uh, STL, I don't know which of you know the Mac port of STL, which uses Altivec, Mac STL, which is non-free software, unfortunately. One idea is to try to convince the author to release this as free software code and uh, integrate it in some way into, back into the, in the, in the STL uh, standard library. Uh, it offers similar results, for example, sort is about 10 times faster and uh, it, it's really, it would really, really be fun to see how normal uh, applications that use C++ would benefit from it. Uh, LibDV, which is an encoding library for digital video, uh, etc. The list is really long, um, I have on my other computer. And, uh, yes? Um, what's the impact on context, context switches? Sorry? What's the impact context, on context switches? Well, to tell you the truth, no one has actually measured that. I've asked so many times in the PowerPC development, uh, well, kernel teams, and they said, yeah, we don't know. Basically, they think it's higher, but... It's supposed to be higher, but the benefit... In my opinion, the benefit uh, would be worth it. Uh, uh, Linux doesn't use that. Yeah, I know. Only, I think only Mac OS does. They use it in Mac OS? I think they do. The VR save register is a register which allows you yes. to say we modify these yes. registers and say this is Basically, so far they, have, they haven't used it at all because, um, well, no one actually uses Aldivec extensively to care to care much about uh, context switching. Uh, but once you start to use in a system-wide uh, way, then it's probably going to be significant to at least look at it. And uh, I have some links here. Ars Technica has a very very good article about how G4 and Aldivec works in general. Uh, this is a free scale presentation about the uh, uh, tutorial on Altivec basically, which is really what got me started. It's really very nice, very well done. And uh, of course, Penguin PPC has very good links. Uh, PPC Zone is a very popular, <coughs> very active forum for uh, PowerPC users and fans. Uh, I also have some uh, papers with some Altivec example code in this uh, 
in my uh, account in you know, Debian. And that's the end of it. Uh, I think we have barely enough time. Yes? Yeah. Um, have you seen that uh, Venus has a, a version control system called Git, and that somebody contributed some PPC ultimate code for Right. And, Shab and, Sun, and they seem to be very enthusiastic about making very fast. No, I didn't. Uh, I haven't heard that. Okay, it's in the source table of Git, and uh, they, uh, that seems to be very optimized. And it looks like it probably in ultimate in assembler. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we have to yeah, probably ask you the link afterwards. And yeah. Uh, it's a similar question, but. Uh, do you, do you use uh, Altbeck uh, in uh, user want to kind of run the copy? Mm -hmm. uh, in time, uh, a lot of time you consume user want to kind of time copy, for example, uh, hard disk access, uh, data read write, uh, mm -hmm. TCP IP, and so on. So using Altbeck in, uh, in, that, in uh, that communication, uh, we can more we can achieve more performance. Exactly. There have been uh, many articles, uh, by, especially by Freescale, on this particular subject because you can combine, without it, you can combine the checksum code and the copy, uh, the actual copy. And you have, uh, I've seen many documents and many papers on this particular. I think it's very, very well stressed that, uh, yeah, you can benefit from it and you can actually use the G4 uh, CPU for, say, even uh, gigabit switches, which is not, uh, as, I, as I understand, although I'm not an expert in the field, the actual Linux kernel right now is not really the most efficient uh, operating system for very fast uh, network uh, packet switching. But uh, I think with, in this way we can um, I think this puts the power PC in a very different uh, perspective, especially with companies who work on and produce uh, network switches and network gear. Um, right. I think we barely have enough time to. Excellent. So. Is that are the is the phone visible? Yes. Okay. This is not. No, I have to use. Right, no, again. The GT Mango. Right. So, this is the case with very small sizes with cold cast kits. With, and uh, this is the different alignment. The alignment of uh, source and destination buffers. Uh, for, I know this doesn't really look impressive, but for bytes for sizes of 13 bytes, it's very it's very difficult to get actually an actual benefit from out of it right now. Once the sizes start to grow, this will start to get uh, higher, and. Uh, Right now, let's. I'm not doing a very good job of. Yeah, right now. Uh, I think that small size still has a still pretty large for uh, Yeah. Yes, because the sizes are really small right now. But uh, now it starts to get higher. But uh, let me try to make this a little better. Go ahead. Uh, this is called cash. Right? Yeah. 
This is the worst. Mm. I think it's a bit of, it's still pretty much overhead. Can you, can you start from a, uh, from a bigger size? To, to show the one uh, we beat out uh, the different alignments. Uh, yeah. Sorry, but the next door, we are ready for it. We have to finish? Yeah. Okay, so I'll be a smoky and we can, if everyone wants to discuss and show you the actual code, thank you very much. And, uh, right. Thank okay. you. So, thank you. Shut down. Thanks.